Uh, here to talk more about the complexities of this case, criminal attorney Mark Reichel. Mark, good to see you this morning. Thank you. I want to elaborate on what this witness is saying. Moments ago, he told the judge and the courtroom, again without the jury there, that Alec approached him at an attorney event and he thought he was being bullied, bullied by Alec and Alec told him, if you don't think I can burn your house down, you're wrong, you need to settle this case. As the judge takes in these details and this testimony, what do you think he does? Does he allow the jury to hear this? You know, I, it's a really tough call for the judge, actually. The burning part shows violence, propensity toward violence to solve problems. So I, I think he may allow it in. However, the defense is obviously going to argue whatever small probative or value it has to the state, it's really prejudicial and irrelevant. We're going to have a trial within a trial. We're here, you know, for evidence, facts on whether this individual is, is responsible for these murders. What he does, things like this, things he says to this other attorney pitched in litigation like this, I'm not so sure it really helps the state too much, nor do I think the judge is going to let, let it in. It's a close call, but I think the answer is going to be no. Okay. Well, if the judge does, in fact, let it in, doesn't the defense have um, a room to appeal? Well, they do have the, the right to appeal, obviously, to try to stop the trial and do what's called interlocutory appeal. However, that's not going to happen. That rarely ever happens. We want you to go to trial, then we review things afterwards. However, I do have an opinion that if this comes in, it actually helps the defense. It gives them stuff to just knock down like a pinata in front of the jury. And when they're done, say, that's their theory. I, I think this is really weak evidence by the prosecution. I'm going to go out and allege and say that. I really do think this is this is just really hurts their case. Well, and interestingly, as you listen to testimony, the defense is really not cross-examining any of these witnesses, um, maybe saving their argument if the judge does in fact allow it. Yes, the, the, I think if this comes in, the first thing they're gonna ask him is, were you there at the murder, the night of the murder? Of course, the answer is no. Will you represent them in the civil case? You represent them on the boating accident. Were you there at that? Well, the answer is no. Would you testify in that trial as to what happened at the boating accident? The answer is no, because you're now their lawyer, right? You weren't there that night of the accident for the boat. Well, you weren't there the night of these murders. So what are you exactly doing here? And I think that's what they're going to get at, if you ask me. Mm. Well, let's put a pin in the judge's decision right now, because he hasn't made it yet. And we don't know if any of this will be admitted. But we have seen a lot of evidence shared with the jury, the timeline of that night, very specific details about cell phone data, footsteps around the crime scene, processing and securing that crime scene. Who do you think is doing a better job, Mark, at this point in controlling the narrative for this jury? Well, this is the prosecution narrative. They're doing a pretty good job. I'm going to give them a B. But I think at the end of the day, I've always said in front of my juries that extraordinary claims, there's no real, you know, there's no DNA evidence. There's no, you know, uh, fingerprint evidence. There's no confession. There's no cell phone evidence. There's no video evidence, no eyewitness evidence. Extraordinary claims need extraordinary proof. Here you have average proof. So I think so far, while the prosecution is doing a good job, going to get a B here. I don't think they are absolutely, you know, leveling the playing field with how they're presenting evidence. If I'm a juror, I want to hear from Alec Murdoch. I want to hear him defend himself and say he didn't do this. Is there any chance he takes the stand in his defense? No, I don't see them putting him on at all because he becomes subject to impeachment about everything that he's lied about in the past, any misstatement he's made in the past, everything about his character and the cardinal rule from the defense is you never put your client on unless you have, in my opinion, no hope left. Because everything you do, once you put the client on, either the jury likes that person or they don't. And everything you've done before goes out the door. If they don't like him, it doesn't matter how great of a job you did before you're gonna be convicted. If wow. they like him, that's your best shot. And we've been hearing how intently the jury is watching Alec Murdoch during this trial, his emotional outbursts as he hears the crimes recounted inside the courtroom. It is a complicated case. It is happening as we speak, day eight of testimony. Mark Reichel, thank you for your analysis this morning as we continue to watch this again. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.